So in the previous grouping videos, I showed you how to group the customers by uh, country, and it's very typical to group elements according to some shared property like, like country. But sometimes you want to group by multiple fields. Okay, That's rare, but it does happen. It happens enough you need to know how to do it. So let me show you here in the customer class I added the city. So suppose I want, instead of just grouping the customers by their country, I want to group them by their country and their city. Now, I could just group them by their city, but the problem is if uh, there's two countries with a city of the same name, then all of a sudden I'm going to mix up my data. So I really need to group by the country and the city. All right, so let's just, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to say uh, var uh, result, terrible variable name, but whatever, uh, from cndb.customers group. Now, I want to say c dot, well, I want to group c by c dot country right and also by c dot dot city but I, 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 I syntactically I can't do it I I have to put something here in the by in the by part of my query here that's that's one value I can't just put two well the one way you can make two values into one value is is you take those two values and you shove them into an instance of a class. Well, of course, anonymous types to the rescue. New C dot country, C dot uh, city. All right. Now, if you remember from the anonymous types videos, the uh, anonymous types they implement equals, and they also implement get hash code. So in that case, the group by which this will translate into uh, can can basically query these anonymous type instances for equality and do proper grouping. Okay, so let's just uh, for each um, var, or what's, I guess it's customer, no, no, it's a group, it's an innumerable of, it's an innumerable of i groupings of customers, let's just type it out. I, well it's i grouping, result here is an i enumerable of i grouping of customer, customer, okay, and let's bring the usings in. I'm just hitting control dot and hitting enter to bring the proper, oh, oh, it generated code there for me. If I go, oh, this is going to be bad. If I have 12, yeah, actually generated this class. Let's get rid of that. I went a little bit too fast for IntelliSense. Actually, I didn't go too fast for IntelliSense. I have to pass a second generic argument here. So the the se well, the second one is customer. The first one is, um, well, I'm grouping by these things. Well, I can't say what this is. Remember, the class name is generated by the compiler, so I, I can't put it here. The compiler knows that I don't, so I'm actually forced to say var, unfortunately. So we'll say var result. Okay, so, and because result, I'm forced to do that var thing. I have to do a var down here. Var uh, group in result. So now we have these these groups of customers grouped by the countries and the cities. So now that we're going more granular here, right? We're not just country, we're country and city. So we're actually going to get smaller groups because, you know, like it, when we put the, I think it was 13 Americans in one group. But once I split them up by their city, then, yeah, I'm going to get more groups. And then the number of people in each group is going to be smaller because I'm, I'm, I'm adding fields here that I'm grouping by. Anyway, let's, let's, let's look at the results here. For each... Uh, var, I have to say var because um, I can't say var. I have to say var up here because of this. There's no type name here. Okay, so var, uh, var group. Uh, let, let's let's do a more intuitive variable name. Make this easier. Let's say city, country, group. <laughs> in result. Uh, console write line city. Whoops, city, country group dot key and let's put a semicolon out there, or a colon just for good form and then I'm gonna say console right line or no 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 we need to iterate now over all the customers in each group just like we did in a previous video when we group by country so for each customer C in the city country group Console right line, I'm going to put some spaces out here, plus an underscore app domain. No, I'm not. Plus uh, c dot, 
Let's do contact now. Well, I could do anything I want to, but we'll do contact name. That's nice and clean. Okay, let's run that and view the results here. Okay, look, we're, we're almost to the point where we're only getting one person per group. You know, that, you know, sometimes that happens. Let's see if we... Oh, here's one. USA, Portland. So it looks like in Portland there's there's two people in the city of Portland there and so on and so forth. Notice uh, Germany, Venezuela... City is, oh, I don't know, De Margarita. <laughs> that sounds like a fun city to go to. Uh, anyway, pretty much we've, oh, here we go, Brazil, S Sa Sao Paulo, is that how we say that? There's four people in that city. That's kind of interesting. Anyway, um, I want to, ooh, big group there. Sorry, I'm getting too excited about my data. London. I spent a couple years in London. Anyway, um, we're already at time for this video, but... But I want to, I want to show you. I think it's useful to see all these queries kind of mix and match and stuff. Let's, let's now, now that we have the groups, let's. Uh, well, first of all, let's let's order by um, c dot country, and then by c dot city. And notice what happens with the group by. Okay, let's go to the top there. The group by. Look, we have Argentina, Buenos Aires. Austria, Austria, Belgium, Belgium. So the group by didn't it, it did a stable group, so to say. It didn't screw up our uh, our ordering here. Brazil, and notice the cities are ordered within the countries, which is kind of nice. So that kind of gives us a nice little ordering there. And in the previous query I, or previous videos, I showed you how to actually order by the count if that's the kind of data you're interested in. But so so anyway, this is this is this is good.